Hello everyone, welcome back to another fly tying video for England Scotland. I'm Conor McLennan. The fly I'm going to be tying just now is a variant of a fly called a patagrisson, um, which is a Danish fly invented by famous sea trout angler Klaus Eriksson. Um, his pattern was actually a variation of a pattern called the space shrimp, which originated from another tyre. Um, but this, this little fly has become world famous, um, mainly for sea trout fishing on the coast, but also for salmon fishing, fishing on the flats in the tropics. Um, just a, it's a, a really, really versatile pattern. Quite simple to tie, a bit messy, but once you get the hang of it, um, you, the, the tying process starts to speed up a little bit. So I'm going to start off with the hook I'm using, which is an RX curved shrimp hook. Um, perfect type of hook um, for this fly. You fishing this fly, you can fish it very, very fast, almost as if you're fishing a bait fish or a streamer pattern, or you can fish it very, very slow. So I, I like to fish it quite slow on a floating line, so I'm not going to add any weight into this fly. Quite often Klaus will tie in a little bit of lead to the underside, um, which just balances the fly and gives it a little bit of weight so that he can fish it a bit faster, but I like to fish this really slow on a floating line where I fish. Um, really, really shallow waters. Fish come in into sort of a bit of foot of water. Um, and just cruise around looking for little shrimps and gobies and sticklebacks and things like that. This fly is not really so much a, a representation of the common shrimp that we get here on the Scottish coast. Um, so it's more of a just a, a really, really striking, colourful pattern um, that works really, really well under certain conditions, cold, cold conditions, dull conditions, um, really good spring and autumn fly, um, but it does still catch fish uh, on the coast in the summer. Uh, using UTC shrimp shell pink, um, 140 denier UTC thread, and we'll just start off getting some wraps onto the hook here. Get to that point there. Just snip that away. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're tying in the mouth parts of the shrimp. So you can use any sort of speckled feather for this. You can use widgeon, teal, um, you can use marabou, you can use cock de leon. Um, you can even use speckled craft fur, which I do quite often, but just now I'm going to use a little speckled marabou feather. So I'm just going to strip a lot of this fluff off the stem here. Been using this fly for a number of years now. Um, it's actually one of my best friends that first came across the pattern after studying a lot of the fishing in Denmark. Um, he's actually my next door neighbour, funnily enough. <laughs> Loves fishing just as much as me. Um, but he bought some of these flies off a tyre over in mainland Europe um, and used them here on the Scottish coast and they worked really, really well. So I decided I was going to learn how to tie it. Um, and it's done well for me ever since. So I'm just going to tie the marabou in about an inch long there. Next, we're going to tie in a spay feather. So, the 
This is a kind of salmon pink spay feather. And you'll get these from whiting caps. Very, very good. A lot of movement in the material. You'll have seen me use this previously on the little pink bait fish pattern that I tied. Just going to strip the fluff off the stem there. And then what we do, similar to what I've done previously with the pink bait fish, we're going to tie the feather in by the tip. Just touching turns, pulling all the fibres back, similar to what you would do with a wet fly hackle. You'll see what I mean when I say it can get a little bit messy, but tied hundreds and hundreds of this fly. I've tied it in other colours as well. Another colour that I like to use quite often is like a fluorescent phosphorus yellow chartreuse sort of colour. It works really, really well in the springtime. Naturally, as you get to the thicker end of the stock, it wants to twist away from you, so you just got to keep plenty of tension on it as you're twisting it around. Get to that point there. What I'm going to do is I just unravel the thread from here. a little bit of the stock in there, trim that away. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull these fibres sort of up at a 45 degree angle and just secure these in and then just try and pull some of them back down the sides. Like so. Right. What I'm going to do next is going to tie in a little bit of ripple ice fiber over the top. So it's shrimp pink, ripple ice fibre. Just spread it out a little bit. Now, a lot of other anglers will use things like shell pink, supreme hair and um, Maybe even just some EP fibre for a little bit of contrast against the spay hackle, but I've found this to be really, really effective using the ripple ice fibre. Right. 
next thing we do is we get a little bit of SLF salt water fluorescent shell pink dubbing and we just build a little bit of dubbing up behind the spray hackle there. Now I don't use wax, I just dub it on loosely with my fingers using enough friction to get the dubbing onto the thread because I want to be able to brush this out a little bit. And just building that up. And essentially what this is going to allow us to do, you'll see in a little minute, is we're going to tie in the eyes and that's going to let us prop the eyes up. So using fluorescent orange, easy shrimp eyes. Sometimes I'll spend a lot of time making up my own shrimp eyes, but I've been tying more and more flies nowadays with these. They are expensive, but they're, they're really, really good quality. You can make up a lot of your own eyes and they'll burst off. These very, very rarely burst off when you catch a sea trip. And we all know some of the bigger sea trout can have some pretty nasty teeth. Right. Next, we'll get a very, very thin but strong piece of nylon. And what this is going to do later on is it's going to help us tie in a little shell back coming over the back of the fly. So this stuff is 0.10 mil and it's more than two kilos breaking strain. And that's firmly tied in. It very, very rarely ever breaks. So tie that in. And then we get our other spay feather. So this is the feelers and the mouth parts. And this spay feather is essentially going to be all the little legs. And it really pulses through the water. And again, we're going to tie it in by the tip. to get the thread back up to the starting point there and now what we're going to do is we're going to get our shell pink dubbing again and we're going to just add a lot of dubbing onto this fly all the way down towards the eye of the hook
So as I said, depending where you're going to be fishing, if you're going to be fishing slightly deeper water, sort of average three, four, five, six feet deep, or even if you're going to be fishing really deep water and you want to fish this a little bit faster or you want to fish it on a sinking line um, into deep water, then you can add a little bit of lead to the underside of here. and tons as you're going down. As you see again, didn't use any wax, just wound it on loosely. It's going to get brushed out later. all the fibres back as we're winding it around best we can don't worry if some of the fibres end up going back the way when we catch them in with the, the nylon then we'll be able to bring them forward again so open turns this time as we're going down Uh, we got our shell back material, so I'm using pink EP fibre, which is really really good. Just want to bring that up a little bit away from the eye. Now, quite often what a lot of people do is when they cut this, they'll cut it about here and just leave a little bit sticking out, but I tend to find quite often that messes with my leader the way I like to fish this fly, so I just take it in as close as I possibly can. Secure it in. Then what I like to do, just to stop this unraveling, is just get a little bit finish. And then we get our nylon. So I think just break a bit of this fibre a bit. first little bit caught in like so and what I do is I just use the end of my lip finish tool here to pull out some of the spray hackle fibres as we're winding this in Oops. 
try not to catch any of the EP fiber. If we do, we can just pull these little strands out and break them off. This is the bit that takes plenty of patience. If you've not got that, then it's probably not the fly that you want to be tying. We all love our fly patterns that take five minutes or less, but this fly is definitely worth it in my book. Oh, finish. Oops. So the last thing to do is just trim the EP fibre here at the back in terms of the material. So like to taper it like that. And then Just brush out this dubbing a little bit underneath. Just very, very carefully, making sure we're not catching any of the EP fibers on the back of the flight. Too much, just a little bit. That's the profile of the flight. So, just finish this off with a little bit of golf resin. stuff I'm using is the fat man resin it's just really really easy to work with normally use a dubbing needle but I forgot to leave one down so I'm just using the end of my whip finish tool here improvise and 
Smell good. Let's see the colors. Sorry about that. You imagine with the natural UV light in the water. That's this fly. You can see trout can see it a mile away. It's a good thing though. Very rarely see it, I think, and go, what the hell is that? There you have it, Pathogris and Shrimp, or my variation of it anyway, it works really really well. Have a crack at it, see how you get on. Thanks for watching.